Okay, we're going to start with a simple Hello World program for Java. And what we want to do is we want to emit Hello World. There's lots of places that we could put Hello World. We could print it out to a printer. We could send it across the internet over the network card. We could put it onto the hard drive. Or what we, we could uh, make a window that pops up and says Hello World. What we want to do is we want to put it on a console. So there's going to be a black screen that pops up and it's going to say Hello World. And uh, no matter what way we want to emit Hello World, Java cannot do it by itself. It has to have help from the system. The system is also called the operating system. And it's called a system call. But we're going to call a method from the operating system. And we're going to say, hey, please print this out. <clears throat> and uh, what we want to do is we want to call the print line method. That's the short name for it. And print line basically is one word that represents a whole bunch of code. There's, when we uh, execute the print line, a lot of stuff's going to happen. Stuff's going to be moved around in order to put stuff on the console. All we have to do is tell our print line method what we want to print out. And so I, I put it in parentheses. And then this is called a parameter. And this is the information that we're feeding into the print line method. Now, if I put in here hello world, it's going to, or at least Java compiler is going to think that hello is a variable. And it's going to think world is a variable. So in order to make sure it doesn't confuse it, I want it to be a literal. A literal is the opposite of a variable. So I want to put it in quotation marks. That way, the Java compiler knows that hello world is literally what I want to print out, not some variable. I'm going to put a semicolon at the end. That's the number one thing that new programmers forget to do is put that semicolon. Basically, Java blocks. That means it will take a, a, a line of code. It'll execute it. It will block the compiler until that line of code is done executing. And then it will go on to the next line. I said block compiler. I meant the processor. <clears throat> and so things happen one line at a time. And if we forget to put that semicolon, then we can't figure out which line is which. It's required. So print line is the name of the method, but it's a system method. And so we're going to use, or we're going to include the namespace here. That lets our compiler know exactly which print line we're talking about. There could be a lot of different ones. We're talking about the operating system dot out print line. <clears throat> Notice that system is capitalized. OK, so here's all the code that we want to execute. But there's one problem. And the problem is, is that um, when we run the program, the program is going to look for a main method and execute the main method. If there's no main method, it won't execute. So the main method is, an is a uh, method that the Java finds automatically and executes. So we're going to add all this code within a main method. So I create main parentheses, and then I put some curly brackets at the front of the main method, some curly brackets at the end of the front method. All my line in here is, <clears throat> so there's the end of the main. So this is where all my executable code is going to go that's going to execute automatically. So here we have main. And with this method, we've got to add some additional things. We have to add an access type. So basically, there's three access types, public, private, or protected. Public means that anybody can execute it. And that's what we need to do with our main method. If our method is protected, then it's not going to be executable except for trusted processes. And uh, so we're going to leave this public. We also need to mention whether it's static or whether it's dynamic. If we leave the word static out, then it is dynamic by default. But here I'm putting the word static in here. Static means that it doesn't change. When the program starts, the main method executes. When the program ends, the main method stops executing. So the main method is there the entire time that the program's there. Memory is set aside for the main method at the beginning of the program, and it stays there throughout the life cycle of the program. And then uh, we're going to add one more thing, and that is the return type. <clears throat> when we call a method, we, have, we often have a return type. That means it's going to return some data. Suppose I was to call a method that generated a random number. I would expect it to return an integer back. Here it's returning nothing. Main is called. Nothing comes back. And then lastly, we want to give the user the opportunity that when they call the program to include some what are called switches or flags 
or uh, just some strings at the end of it. So they'll type in the name of the program, and then they can put some qualifiers. And that is an array of strings. And we show an array of strings by typing in string, capital S notice, <coughs> with some brackets. And we're going to call those strings by custom args. We could call them anything else, but we're going to call them args because that's the customary name to call them. Okay, so now we've got our main method, but the main method must be encapsulated in a class. So just to get this hello world, we've got some infrastructure. The last thing we need to do is create a class, and we do this by typing class and then the name of our class, which in this case is hello world. <clears throat> There's some curly brackets to start it, and I'm going to have some curly brackets to end it way down here at the bottom. And hello world. <clears throat> to make things easier to read, I can then um, tab this, put some spaces, might make it easier to read. And then uh, one thing I should mention is white space, and that is white space in Java generally doesn't matter, so that I could put extra spaces here if I wanted to, and it doesn't matter. I could put a space or a carriage return here. That wouldn't affect things. There are a few places that you can't put white spaces. For example, we can't go down here to namespace and interject some spaces in a namespace. But uh, otherwise, we pretty much can put white space wherever we want to, tabs, re carriage returns, spaces. <clears throat> now, when I save this, it's very important that I save it in the same name as I created it. So this is cl called class Hello World without any spaces, with a capital H and capital, capital W, I've got to call it hello world.java with a capital H, capital W, no spaces. <clears throat> if we don't do that, it uh, won't work. So, so this should compile. Compile will be in a different video. Thank you for watching.